Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome to another deck profile challenge for you all guys. This week, or rather last week, I was challenged by the guys over at Uspot Gaming to create a fun deck where essentially the idea of it was you took a card from a Vingol 3 that you quite like a lot and you build a deck around that or incorporating it slash inspired by it and whatnot. So I decided I'm going to make this a Wonder Shell deck. It's going to be mono red. I will reveal the card or whatever that is going to be the Vingol 3 card that's inspired this deck and whatnot. So thank you for the awesome challenge, guys. I really enjoyed seeing your video and whatnot. I can make this deck a Wonder deck because obviously the guys made their deck. They had two viable rulers for it, one of them being Vlad Tepes, the other one being Mikage. So I decided since I don't really do that many Wonder start, uh, style kind of decks and whatnot, I thought, why not? We'll make this a Wonder deck. So... The first ruler we have for this deck, if I flip him over to the correct side, is we have the Guardian of Magic Stones. If my camera would just like to focus on the card itself so I can actually read it, that'd be great. So he is a 5 cost for a judgment of 2 red and 3 void. He has an energize of a red, obviously, for fire. And when he has a resonance ability that whenever a fire magic stone enters your field, this card, uh... This card may deal 200 damage to target Resonator. And obviously when he flips over into his majestic side here, and my camera is wanting to be a potato here and not wanting me to read the card, it's a 1200, 1000. He flies, obviously. And when this card enters your field, you, this card deals 1000 damage to each Resonator your opponent controls. And if a Resonator dealt damage by this card would be uh, put into a graveyard, remove it from the game instead. So he is pretty awesome, even though he's got a hefty cost and whatnot. And we are also running Sylvie as a kind of side in option and whatnot, because obviously she still works just as well. Obviously with her ability to turn, basically to make fire magic stones just green, we don't have to worry about color fixing because we are essentially just running 20 magic stones that are fire. She costs four, so she's cheaper than the Guardian of Fire Magic Stones. Although her uh, ability when she enters is that she only deals 1,000 damage to one Resonator, which may not be as good. It might be, it might not wipe the board and whatnot. But whenever she basically kills a Resonator and it goes to the graveyard, she can recover up to three target Magic Stones. So both of these res uh, both of these J rules are actually both viable options for the style of deck. It is mainly kind of like an aggro slash burn deck. I'd say it leans more towards a burn deck because there's more spells and resonators and whatnot. So those are the, oops, if I can knock, knock the camera. Those are the rulers that we have in particular. So what card was it that inspired me to make this deck? If I can just grab it over here because it's off to the side of the camera here. And I'm trying to make this organized as best as I can. We have Kane, if the camera would like to focus on him. Kane from Vingol 3, obviously. He is the treacherous killer of the gods, as the potato camera is trying to show you here. It might also be the sleeves or whatever not being quite clear enough. But anyway, he has a one cost resonator with zero attack, 400 defense. But the main idea with him, even though he's a wizard for some reason, is that when he taps, he deals 200 damage to target opponents. So the main idea of the deck is that we are basically burning our opponent's life as much as we can. Now, obviously, this might not work so well if, say, you're going up against Yggdrasil or Evil Yggdrasil or whatever, but I like the idea of this because in Wanderer, there is just so much access to burn spells that damage your opponent, that deal a massive amount of damage to resonators and whatnot, so why not have a little bit of fun basically making a mono-red deck? So he is mainly the inspiration for it, and I just, I finally got a place out of this uh, card in particular, because obviously I only got one copy of Vingolf, so I only have two copies of the majority of cards. Some of them I managed to get secondary and uh, more cards or whatever, so I can have a place out of some of them. Kane is one of the ones I managed to get a place out of, so that is why he is the inspiration for this deck. And I would love to show you the awesome art of the camera, but I'd just like to focus on his lovely face. There we go, that's a bit better there. So next up for Resonators, we have four, four copies here, if you can count them all, four copies of the Flame Sprite. And again, this is quite a good choice for those aggro decks forever because it's cheap, literally costs one. It has Flying and Swiftness, so basically the turn it enters, you can attack with it. It's only got 200 attacks, so you're only chipping away for 200, similar to Kane. But on the plus side, it's a blocker as well, So and it's also a sacrifice option, rather than running four of it, to one of our Wander cards in particular. One of the main reasons I wanted to make this a Wander deck, actually, is that we're running four Cthulhu's. So the main idea here would be that we would say, stick in the Flame Sprite, depending on the situation or whatnot, we would then go in to attack with Flame Sprite. Then once Flame Sprite's done, we would use the incarnate ability of Cthulhu here to basically kill the Flame Sprite and put in Cthulhu. Cthulhu has Swiftness. He can attack, or it can attack, because it's technically like an egg Cthulhu thing. It can attack for 500, and basically we can just recycle this, we'll attack with Cthulhu, banish Cthulhu, attack with Cthulhu, all this and stuff, if we manage to get all four of them in our hand, obviously. But basically it is just a fun galore with Cthulhu here. And I also think it matches well with the deck sleeves here by the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes, and that is some wicked fire. 
Next up, we have four copies of Volga, who is the true successor of Certo, apparently. A two-cost resident, who is 4 for 400, who I will be sad to see go when he rotates out with Alice Coster. I will be honest, I'll be very sad to see him go, because he's such a good card for um, aggro fire decks and whatnot. So whenever this card is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to your opponents. Obviously, if your opponent has got some thrighty big resonators that don't have flying, and, have, and this thing is still setting up, your opponent is very wary of attacking, because obviously that damage is dealt to them, unless they remove Volga, they kill him, or something like that. So the majority of the time, Volga can sit there and be quite a big threat, even though he's only a 400 or 400. Because your opponent obviously doesn't want to hit him. Your opponent doesn't want you to block with him or whatever. So they, if they do, they will probably spend most of their time trying to get rid of Volga. Maybe ignore Kane in the process and whatnot. So that's why we're running four of him. And last but not least for Resonators, we just have two copies here of Keeper of Time Urter or Arter, or, 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 or I'm not quite sure how you meant to pronounce it. It's a three cost resonator, one fire, and two avoid. An 800, 800. When this card enters your field, you may remove up to two cards in your graveyard from the game. If you do, it deals 200 damage multiplied by the combined cost of the cards removed this way to target J slash resonator. And as long as there are 10 or more cards in your removed area, this card gains 300, 300 and target attack. The main reason I stuck this in here and only at two. Is because a lot of our spells are one drops and basically as soon as we use them they are done they're dead there's no way we can give them quick cast or none of them have quick cast in particular no no not quick cast sorry remnant remnant is what i mean none of them have remnant so when they hit the graveyard they're just sitting there doing nothing so i figured why not get a little bit of use out of them and use this card i would run four copies of it but considering it's quite expensive here uh it just doesn't seem worthwhile so that's why i'm only running two and we can still get some use out of the cards in our graveyard or whatever to hit uh, resonators and all that good stuff so that's why i'm running two copies of this now on to our spells in conjunction with all the other burn stuff whatever we've got we have this card in particular the barrier of flame which i feel like a lot of people fell out of love with because they were like oh you would have to run a really a lot of burn spells to get any good use out of this but since this deck does have a lot of burn spells and whatnot i thought you know what we're gonna stick it in because it's one of my favorite cards and it was my favorite cards when i had my og sylvia deck I see two cost addition fields, it is one fire and one void. If a normal spell you control would deal damage, it deals that much plus 200 instead. So considering we have three, and we're running like 20 magic stones, we could easily, uh, or we've got even energize if we go second, we could drop this like, say, turn... Well, we could easily drop it turn one if we have energized and whatnot. But we can even drop it turn two and whatnot and set up for all of our burn spells and whatnot to deal even more damage would be extra, extra nice. And what burn spells am I talking about? Well, first up, we have to have them lightning strikes. I'll put the promo ones at the front here because the promo ones are prettier to look at. Lightning strikes, obviously, quick cast, uh, rather speed, chant, instant, if you were in the OG days. It's got quick cast, it is a one drop. It deals 500 damage to either a target resonator, Jesus resonator or other, or to your opponent. And we have four of these. Ideally, we would want to have 12 of all the awesome burn spells, whatever, but since I don't have all the copies of them, we don't have the maximum number. But we have the majority of them, which is very, very nice. The next one that I'm talking about, of course, is Thunder, which I only have three copies of. I'm pretty sure I did have a playset of them at one point. I don't know where the last one is. It must be in one of my other folders, whatever, because literally I have folders full of, like, rares and stuff from all the way back to Ground Cluster up until now. So, literally, it must be sitting somewhere. But since we don't have it, we're running it at three. It literally does the same thing as Lightning Strike. It just has a different name, so therefore we can run it. Obviously, if it had the same name uh, and just had a reprint or whatever, we wouldn't be able to use it. But since it's a different name from Lightning Strike, it is viable to be used in a Wanderer deck so we're just running three of these and last but not least we have memory to memoria which is obviously one of the recent cards that came out in return of the dragon emperor it's kind of similar but a little bit different at the same time it's a one cost it doesn't have quite cast sadly but you know you, you do what you must it, we can choose one this card deals t uh, 400 damage to a target resonator and you produce a fire or this card deals 500 damage to target player ideally we would just use the secondary effect to try and hit home as much damage as we can to our opponent ideally if we can at least use at least four of these each that's at least like um so say we used four of these for the secondary ability and four of our lightning strikes that is ideally four thousand damage there if our opponent did not manage to actually uh, stop any of those with any cancels and whatnot or hand removal next up we have two demon flames that work quite well with the guardian of firestone's resonance ability is a one cost uh, quick cast chant as we saw we can either deal 500 damage to a target resonator or we can destroy a target resonator that was dealt damage this turn so basically use the resonance ability to damage something and then use this to kill it quickly only running two of it because i feel like two is kind of enough anymore and i just feel like we're not running enough burn we need more burn in this deck next up we have even more burn now we have the 
uh, what's it called again? The Invitation of Disaster. Now, I know this card actually works better if you're running some kind of ancient magic slash mana ruler. So, if you're using Mars or, Merc or Mercurius, well, Mercurius wouldn't really help because that's only for water ancient magic. But, say if you're using this for Ab, uh, not Abdel, for Gil Al Hamat, for Sol, it works better because obviously you can use ancient magic mana counters for the Awakening. But otherwise, I still feel like it's a decent three cost chant for fire. So, that's why I'm sticking it in at 3. We can choose 1. This card deals a two, uh, 800 damage to a target resonator. If this card was awakened, it deals 2000 damage instead. Or if this card deals 800 damage to your opponent. And if it was awakened, it deals 2000 damage instead. But potentially, depending on how the game goes, you could maybe get enough stones to awaken it. I doubt that you would, even though we're running 20. That's mainly on the off chance that we actually solve for a long game or whatever. And we're not being as super speedy as we like. But in the end, I still like it. That's why we're running it at 3. Last but not least, in terms of our main deck here, we have three of these, which are also super awesome. It is Rapid Decay. The problem ones, because I managed to get them off a of Big Orbit, if you remember long ago in that big video I did unboxing all those promos and stuff that we got off a of Big Orbit. So it's a one cost chant and basically destroy a target resonator with a total cost of of two or less. So not exactly the burn that we want, but it's also handy for dealing with stuff like, say, Abdul, things like, I'm trying to think of any, any other two costs that are quite annoying. Um, well, I guess the new Dark Alice, that would also be annoying. Um, any other things that are two. So, you know, well, that's, that's still relevant now before rotation and whatnot. A lot of two drops are quite annoying to get rid of and whatnot. So, that's why I wanted to include this into the main deck. And I don't have them all with me, but just imagine that there's a big pile of 20 fire magic stones, all with Sylvia. I would love to have, like, at least 20 of these stones forever because it is gorgeous artwork, and I totally adore it, and I would love to have them all. Sadly, I've only got, like, eight of them, but I will find more. Like, I'm just kind of hoping that one day somebody just sticks them all, all of their copies on eBay, and I can just buy them all and just have, like, all fire magic stones. It would literally be the only fire magic stone I would ever use, ever, because it's, like, the best artwork. Just look at her. She is gorgeous. She is just totally gorgeous. But anyway... That is my deck profile, guys, for um, uh, the deck profile challenge here. The Obviously, the main assets being here, the two options for our rulers, and Kane, the main boy of this deck. So let me know what you think of this deck, guys. Do you think it'd be kind of fun to have this mad aggro, this mad burn kind of deck, whatever, if we um, faced off with these two decks? What do you think we would win? Do you think um, Usepot Gaming's Vlad slash Makagi build would win with their, I believe the card they picked for their Van Gogh pick was Odin? Um, or would do you prefer the burn of Kane and his fiery pistol here going pew, 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 pew? Um, leave a comment down below guys to tell me what you think be sure to check out their video I'll link it in the description so you can check it out so you can see who you think had the better deck profile and whatnot who had the better choice of cards and everything like that so I will be looking forward to doing another deck profile challenge I'm not sure who with um I don't know if I'll send another challenge maybe them or maybe busy dad or somebody but we'll find out who we're going to challenge next time so until next time guys I will see you all later